Okay, let's see my solutions. So for the first one, uh, I'm adding the intense. So well, again, for the echo word, that is a word repeated by uh, the echo times. And after that, I'm checking the if intense. Well, if the intense is true, and then I want to, uh, I want to do this part, which is I want to change all the letters into other cases. Okay. Well, and another thing I want to mention is, well, probably you you think about this, right? Well, you say if intense equals equals true, and that's okay. Well, sometimes in Python you can do intense equals true. Well, uh, and the cool thing is, well, I'm calling that the syntax sugar, which is well, you are using a better readable syntax, the better the more readable variable names, just to make your code a little bit closer to the natural language. Okay. Well, uh, in Python, I believe the designer have keep that keep that in mind well we want to add more syntax sugar into uh, the Python language to make the code a little bit more readable and if you see the old style languages like Fortran or C you won't feel this way okay so that's another cool thing about Python and uh, if the intent is true we want to do everything into uppercases and otherwise I, do, I want to keep all the uh, letters at the same and then I'm adding three exclam exclam exclamation marks okay and then for this one well i'm using the column column name as a long as the default so well i'm going to do the df equals the column name here well if the if the user specify a different column name and that's okay but anyhow well def the default value of the column name will be long Okay, and then this is nothing new here and for this part and remember this is how you can rename the columns Well, and if say if you have a data frame and you want to rename part of the columns But not all of them and this is how we can do that. So what is this? This is a key colon value and then we have curly braces. What is that? That is a dictionary, right? So, well, this dictionary defines for an existing column name in the old data frame, and then how I want to remind, uh, how I want to change it to a new name. So, in this case, I know in Trump's Twitter data set, I have a column language, and then I'm changing that to lang. And then if I want to call, if I want to make the function call and then count the unique uh, languages used in Trump's Twitter, and then this is what I got. So English, of course, the highest. And then he, he did French tweet once. And then for the undefined, those are, those are, those are the reason, the reason should be uh, President Trump only retweet something or he only copy and paste a hyperlink so that is the the language of that tweet cannot be determined so that is the und mean okay and then the next one if i want to count the number of the unique clients president trump used and then i want to specify the trump df and then i'm counting the distinct entries of the client and then this is what we what we have seen in the last time Okay, so well, let's move on. And there are two uh, handy functions built in in Python. The so number one is uh, we want to import the iteration tools, and then inside the iteration tools, and we can do a repeat. That is, we specify what to repeat, and then we repeat that for how many times. And after that, I can cast that into a list. So for this one, I'm repeating the A for five times, and then after that, I want to put that into a list. So I'm going to have the five A's in a list. And this is not quite quite impressive because you can always do that with the A repeated for uh, five times and then you cut it into a list. So well, this one is not super useful in this case. However, later, if you want to do something harder, that is, I want to repeat a tuple, unknown 80 for five times. Okay, and then I have unknown 80, unknown 80, though this will be repeated for five times again. So, well, this is sometimes you may find this useful. For example, if you want to add 
a new column. And for now, all the values of that new column are the same. And then, well, one of the way is how about you create a, a list of uh, of the same entries and then put that into that column. Or uh, if you want to create a, a data frame inside your memory, and then, well, you may find this this tool, this function to be useful from time to time. And the next thing is the product. So for the product, that is an easy way that you can uh, exhaustively put, uh, create all the possible combinations. Say I'm having uh, I'm having the string A B C D, and then I want to get all the exhaustively all the possible two combinations. So A A A B A C A D etc. So how can I do that? That is the product, and then A B C D all the members possible, and then the repeat. How many times I'm repeating? So if I'm doing the two, and then I'm getting the A A A A B A C A D and B A B B etc. Okay, and if I want to do the repeat as three, and then you have the A A A A A B A C A A D and then A B A A B B etc. So well, this is uh, this is a way that you can easily exhaustively got all the possible combination of a finite list. So from time to time, you may find you have to use this. Okay, so let's do a very quick sum up. So the number, uh, so the first uh, of this lecture, we talk about the scopes of the variables. And uh, well, and uh, if you, uh, the rule is, you can access global variable names inside a function definition, which is a local scope. So in the local scope, it is okay for you to access the global scope, but no, it's not a good idea. And well, another thing is inside of the local scope, you can even change the variables defined in the global scope. How do you do that? There is a uh, there is a keyword called global. So you are claiming that you are touching a global variable name. Well, again, for those two things, well, you, you don't want to do that. The reason is when you are creating a function and you don't want to just use that in, in the current project. If you create a function which is super useful, you some, from time to time, you may want to grab an old function in another project and then put it into a new project you are working on. So in this way, well, this means, well, your function definition should be decoupled from the, the other data or the, the other, uh, uh, the other uh, variable definitions. So your function should be decoupled so that you can use a function in different scenarios, right? And then the final thing will be, uh, well, when you are defining, uh, you can you can define a function with default variables. Well, for some of the arguments, they can have the default values, and but may not it may not be all of the pr parameters okay and then when you are defining a function with the default values for some of the arguments and remember well you want to put all the variables uh, with uh, all the uh, parameters with the default values at the end so you have to start from the uh, the arguments or the parameters without the default values and then you move on and you start to do the arguments with the default values okay that is a rule in python okay so that's it for today and i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow bye